Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Melissa, and if you're new here, hi, how y'all doing? My name is Melissa, and I do missing children case on my channel. So if you are interested in that, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell so you can be notified every time I upload. Before we start, we get started on this today's video. I want to say I'm sorry about my hair. I've been sick lately. Um, it's cold where I live in Houston. So we are new from Houston, and you know how the our weather is just does not know how to make up its mind. So I've been sick. Um, I've been wanting to upload. I was gonna upload yesterday, but it was just, I had just been feeling out of breath. I just it just I can't explain it, but I just I have been feeling out of breath. My whole back is killing me. Mind y'all, if y'all been knowing me, I think I mentioned it a couple of videos ago. I do have a daughter, and um, and I did not get when I had her. I did not get the epidural because. I know a lot of people say that when you do get the epidural, you do end up with back pains um, after that. And it gets worse during the cold weather. But I didn't get an epidural. Um, didn't have the time for it because my daughter was already ready to come out. <laughs> so I didn't get the chance to get it. Um, but still, I do still feel back pains. And it's just crazy. So today I have a new story. Today we're going to be talking about this new case missing child's case we're gonna be talking about martha so let's go ahead and get started and i will stop rumbling and yeah this let's go ahead and get started and i got a new case on my phone y'all i got a new case y'all see my case it says i wish you i wish to know would you have been the last dream of my soul i am in love with butterflies like i love butterflies something about him and i got another one um i got two it came with another one and i did i couldn't decide which one i wanted to use so i decided to use this one so yeah so let's go ahead and get started so martha jen lemberter was born on march 26th of 1973 was a 12-year-old florida girl who went missing on november 27th of 1985 she has never been seen again and foul plays highly suspected in her case so Martha was born to Howard and Margaret Lemberter on March 26th of 1973. I'm probably saying her last name wrong and I do apologize. Um, she was described as a kind, shy girl who loved to spend time with friends' houses. However, Martha's life was not perfect. Her father, Howard, was an alcoholic and his temper was exuflet. Her mother was often fighting with Howard and her two brothers were estranged due to unknown reasons. Give me... Hold on. Something tells me I did this case already. Hold on. Shoot. Never mind, guys. I'm so sorry about that. I just thought I, for some reason, I thought I did this case. I don't know why I thought I did, but I have not. So let's keep going. Um, her mother was often fighting with Howard, and her two brothers were strange. Due to unknown reasons, possibly, possibly children abuse, Martha and her brothers spend much of their, their young lives in foster care in many different homes. Despite Martha's small stature, she was known to be forced to re recant re re with. Martha was the peacekeeper between her two older brothers and got along with them. Martha enjoyed spending time with her mother, who referred to Martha as her best friend. Martha enjoyed attending church. She had a poor grace at the time. But like school, Martha liked to eat friends' potato, fried potatoes, spaghetti, like country music, and like soccer. Martha loved her family and was excited for Thanksgiving of 1985 because she would be spending the day with her family at her grandmother's house. Martha, a seventh grader, was last seen on November 7th, 27th of 1885. She attended her classes at Kilini's Junior High School that day, and when school co concluded, she went to a friend's residence for some time afterward. She then left her friend's house to return her to her own home in Caroline Road in St Street, Augustine, at approximately 7.30 p.m. Whatever happens afterwards is not clear, as her family gave varying stories of events that night. Martha was reported missing at 3 a.m. on November 28th when no one could find her. Martha described as a Caucasian female with blonde hair and blue eyes. She stood up personally four, five, 
four feet and five inches, weighs 70 pounds. She had a birthmark in her upper left chest and the front of her right thigh. Her top front teeth slightly produced. Martha was last known to be wearing a short sleeve summer dress and a two-piece matching bathing suit. Authorities start, started to search for Martha immediately following her disappearance. Areas along State Road 207 and areas in Key Line Road was searched. Nothing was found in the case then stated to turn cold. The neighbor gave up hope of finding the girl. Since the day she vanished, Martha's mother believed that she was kidnapped and taken from the area. According to her, on the night of Martha's disappearance, she and her daughter were to a social gathering when Martha said, Mom, I'm going over. I'll be back in five minutes. She left the gathering and never returned. When Martha noticed that her substantial amount of time passed and Martha had a return, she went out looking for her. She reported her missing later on. Authority questioned everyone in the area. Some neighbors state that they had seen Martha walking west on Larry Lane Road later that night. Others also report that they had seen a suspicious green van being driven in the area. It was the only vehicle that was not negative to the area. It was apparently spotted soon after Martha's left her brother's David Lee. David gave varying stories as to what occurred that night. He once stated that he saw Martha getting into a black vehicle. Authorities said that they said that the story did not hold up. He wouldn't. That he would then go on to state that he and Martha were having dinner that night when Martha said she was going out. When he asked where she told him, it was none of his concern, and she refused to wiggle her destination. She left, and David watched as Martha walked off into the dark. Martha's case was intentionally considered a runaway, but authorities believe that Martha met without play and was likely deceased. Let me stop right here because here's where I get so confused, so mad, so other type of feelings. One, I always used to always say that sometimes when you have these type of no nosy neighbors, it's not a good thing, but it's a good thing. It's a bad thing, but then it's a good thing. It's a good thing because when you do have neighbors, those type of neighbors that know everybody in the, in the neighborhood and knows what everybody's driving, that's a good thing because as soon as you see that one car and you're like, yeah, that car does not belong in this neighborhood. I'm like, you just, what are you doing, ma'am, sir? You know, and and another thing is, and then you will, I will, it will be talked about. Um, her brother does get questioned a lot. And I cannot remember exactly how old he, he is, um, but it, they, he does get questioned. But one person that does not get mentioned in this whole story, I mean, he does get mentioned once, and that's her dad. Her dad was an alcoholic. But he does not get mentioned again. So my thing is that I'm so confused about is, did y'all ever talk to her dad? I'm not saying, I'm not saying that her dad has something to do with her disappearance. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, did y'all even question him? Because from what, when I was researching this case, the only person that got questioned was the mom and her brother. I don't even think the other brother got questioned, but it was just her mom and her brother. Yes, he was changing up his story. Maybe he was nervous, but it does not mention if they question the dad. That's just something that I'm like, I'm a little confused about it, but let's keep going. Many, including Martha's mother, believe that the girl was abducted by a non-family member while outside. Authorities also suspect that this and have investigating the possibility of a stranger abduction with great lens, but no clues emerge despite extensive search and investigation. No one was ever named as her kidnapper and no one has ever been arrested in connection with her disappearance. Several possible suspects have been named in the case, but there was no evidence in the case to prove that they had anything to do with her disappearance. Margaret also remains hopeful that her daughter may still be alive. Many agencies online continue to classify Martha as a non-family 
family abduction case. So I'm going to be talking about her brother, the one that I told y'all that he got questioned. So his name is David. So David Allen, the middle child of the Lambert family, has always been mentioned in the case. He was given many ver- verified statements to police over the years regarding his sister's disappearance. He at, at that one point stated that Martha was alive and had con- connected him and was going to contact the authorities working on her case. This never occurred. The investigators have always had to the belief that David was hiding something and that he knew more about Martha's disappearance than he let on. He was apparently 14 years old in 1985. And this is where I am so confused. First of all, I thought you I thought a 14 year old was supposed to be in company of adult when he was being questioned. That's just that's may have not happened in every state. But from what I know been you know, and I've been so a true crime person, I know that teenagers are supposed to have a lawyer or any parent when they're being questioned. I really don't think he did anything. I think him being so young and having his sister just dis- be there one night and then the next she's disappeared. I think he just he just tried to try to figure out what was going on and he probably just got scared. He was nervous. He you know, he was trying to figure out stories trying to make him you know be like okay no i know she's somewhere i know she's somewhere she told me she was going this way you know it's just like but why did then i question her other brother and why did then i question her dad that's where i'm confused but yeah the conflict okay so in 2000 when david was arrested for attempting to pass a bad check he told authorities that he was responsible for martha's death and stated he buried her in conquina mine known as the pits on home homeless boulevard the mine was searched but investigators did not find martha's body he could not be charged at the time due to lack of evidence in 2009 he confessed again to killing martha he stated that on november 27th of 1985 he and Martha left the Lambert home because their parent got into a fight over burnt turkey. They went to Lily Champion's convenience store. David apparently had over 20 with him. Martha spent a little over $4 and gave him the change. He then stated that he and Martha went to the abundant Florida Memorial College, which was near the Lambert residence to play. David stated that he had he and Martha got into a fight because he denied Martha's request for another 20. Martha slapped David across the face. And responded, he pushed her. He pushed her so hard that she fell on the in the ground and hit her head on a piece of metal. When David realized what had happened, he pulled Martha up and noticed a large hole in the back of her head and blood was pouring out. He called for help, hoping someone would come and help the girl. No apparently heard him and David was scared of what his parents would do to him if they discovered what he had done to Martha. So by using the broken piece of the roll sign, he dug a... 3-4 Mark shift grave and place Martha hole in the hole he returned home. I really don't think that. To me, yes, it could have probably had happened like that, but I really, I really don't think her brother had nothing to do with it. I think her brother is just mentally and emotionally he's going through so much because he's lost his sister and her sister disappeared. And I feel like he he's blaming himself for it. And he wished that he could have done something for it. And I think just the cops probably... I wouldn't be surprised, but they're probably telling him what to do. They're like feeding him the information and he's just letting them, telling them what they want to hear. That's just my opinion. Authorities were certain that David was telling the truth about his sister's death. He was not charged with manslaughter due to his age at the time of Martha's death and because his statute of limitations had expired by them. Martha's case was closed, but authorities have stated that the investigation can be reopened if new information comes in. Martha's mother remains convinced that Martha was kidnapped and he has stated that David often tells tales to get attention. David later recanted his confession and stated he did not know what happened to Martha. He stated that he has long-standing emotional and mental problems. He also mentioned that the possibility that Martha could still be alive, investigators and forensic terms spent two days searching the grounds where the college once stood but could not find Martha's body. 
constructions and demolition of the area in the year since her disappearance may have moved that grave Martha had never been recovered. Authorities hope to find her and have since collected DNA samples and entered them into NEMAS. Her dental records are also been coded and entered into a national database. There is still hope that Martha's case can be solved and that she can be recovered. Um, and that is the sad story about Martha. I do not think he had his her brother had nothing to do with it. Her brother is out of the question. I'm still trying to I'm still trying to figure out did they question the dad? Did they question the other brother? Where where was the dad in this? Where was he? Because they didn't say anything. I'm not saying that he has something to do with it, but they, they question. That's what I'm trying to get. Like, I'm trying to understand. Like, did y'all question her dad? Because, like, y'all over here questioning a 14-year-old. She did have another brother, so where was he at? And where was it at? I really don't think that David had anything to do with it. I do agree with Martha's mom. He probably, you know, there's kids out there. They, there's kids that will make up stories just to get attention. And and like he said, he has mental problems. He's, you know, with emotion and stuff. And it's just when you lose when you lose somebody so close to you, especially when it's your sibling and you lose them at that young age, it messes you up mentally and physically and emotionally. It just messes you up. And you try to, you tell yourself all these stories just so you can get some attention it's just, it's crazy, but it happens, and I really don't think David had nothing to do with it. I wish I knew if they questioned their dad. If y'all were in that area, if you know Martha's family, let me know in the comments. Or leave me a, a comment. Let me know. Did they question the dad? Did they question the other brother? Have they ever questioned the dad? Have they ever questioned her other brother? Because they're not mentioning, so I'm I'm assuming that they did. Or they didn't. I'm going to go with they didn't because I said the dad only only is mentioned one time. And that's about it. But yes, guys, I will be back with a new video. I hope you have a great, great day. I hope you had a good Thanksgiving because I sure did not. But that's just for another story. <laughs> and um, yeah, y'all have a good day. Keep warm and watch out. Y'all take care of yourself in this cold, cold winter. And if y'all live where it snows, I really do feel bad for y'all. I'm going to pray for y'all. So, 